Hello, lovely internet strangers. If you are a loyal subscriber, this webpage may look familiar to you. If you watched my video last year on OkCupid's non-traditional Valentine's Day cards. If you did not, don't worry. The cards are different this year. You can go back and watch my previous video. I will link it below. But the content is brand new and ready for us to dive into. OkCupid has the card for you because their cards aren't for just anyone. They're for everyone exclusively inclusive valentines. Don't try to figure that one out, sweetie. You'll hurt your head. So I've only glanced at the first couple of these 20 cards. I do not remember there being that many last year. Maybe there was. I'd have to go back and look. But after glancing at the first few and seeing that there was 20 of these to get through, I decided I was going to need a companion on this journey. My good friend bourbon. I had a little bit before the filming of this video and I will continue drinking this bourbon as we progress so that I can survive the filming of this video with my sanity intact. So let me read the introduction to this collection of non-traditional Valentine's Day cards, no doubt written by some poor schlub of a copywriter over at OkCupid. Valentine's Day is all about sharing the love. So for the second straight year, quite the streak you've got going, we've partnered with a diverse group of inspiring artists to help you do just that. Whether you're a couple, a thruple, a not sure what we are, or just wanna send some self-love, ugh. These ultra-inclusive cards are meant for every kind of situationship, so go ahead and share some love. On social, yay PDA, in DMs, privacy is sexy too. However you want, just share the love, because we all deserve it. Happy Valentine's Day to every single one of you. Kiss heart emoji. Okay, I am both terrified and excited to go through this list with you. Before I go any further, I need to be very clear. Some of the artwork is very NSFW, so just take that into consideration when you are viewing this. Maybe make sure you are alone or with people that you would like to view slightly NSFW content with. They are illustrations, but I have not looked at all these cards yet and remembering what the cards were like last year, I'm just gonna warn you. You're probably gonna see a man wearing very tight underwear at the very least. So last year I just displayed the entire web page and looked at two cards at a time, but I didn't like that you could see the card coming after before I was done discussing the current one and the cards keep flashing and it gets annoying and distracting after a while. So this year we are looking at each of the cards individually for an up close and perfect personal look at this beautiful artwork that just really makes these cards sing. So this first one, roses are red, violets are blue, so are my balls. Please come over now. How romantic. I'm definitely coming over after receiving that card. I don't know about you guys. Very clever wordplay. However, who would you send this card to? Normally I would say that a guy would be the one sending this card, but I think in current year I have to say that a ball owner would be sending it. Hey, person who's been potentially leading me on and not putting out, I would like you to come over so that we can have sex and I won't have blue balls anymore. Okay, thanks, bye. Yeah. I can see that this card would be very successful. I can't believe that I didn't have this one in my arsenal so that I could share it with all of my ball-having friends on this special occasion of Valentine's Day. I can tell you that they are in desperate need. So I thought we should take a look back at this artwork because you can see the butt in the sunglasses. I think that's a really amazing detail. It would be more appropriate to the context of the card if we saw balls somewhere on this card, you know, because of the blue balls. So this one says, be mine, a very traditional Valentine's Day message. But since we see multiple couples hugging on the card, there's obviously going to be a twist. And anyone else's happy poly Valentine's. So the loyal subscribers to my channel, you will know that I have been polyamorous for many years. And this Valentine pisses me off. It's so cringe. It's so inaccurate. And I don't don't know who the hell would use it. A lot of right-wing, super anti-woke kind of people, the kind of people who think that polyamory and other forms of non-monogamy are going to ruin the world and Western civilization as we know it, would see this and be like, see, exactly, this is what I'm talking about. However, even the kind of poly people that they usually rail against and the kind of poly people that I find cringe, I don't think would use this valentine because most polyamorous people, A, don't believe in 
that kind of concept of ownership within relationships, like be mine. And moreover, it's not a free for all. It's not like be mine and anyone else's. You may enter into sexual and or romantic relationships with other people, but you're not just gonna go with anyone because it's gonna be a carefully considered decision, one that affects your other partner or partners. So this is a super cringe card that I can't see anybody using because obviously the non-poly people aren't going to use it. And all the poly people I've ever met and even the cringe poly people and the more regular poly people that you might find on the polyamory subreddit, I can't see using this card. Polyamory involves advanced relationship skills, advanced communication skills, a high level of honesty and respect for your partners. And this card does not communicate that at all. So hard fail on this one, okay, Cupid. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Now we have a card for people who have just gotten back together with an ex. I'm so happy we're back together, but I do miss the breakup sex. Wow. If someone I just gotten back together with sent me that, I think I would just text back dot dot dot. If you broke up and then got back together, obviously there was conflict, there was reasons for the breakup. You probably want to put that behind you and move forward with building the next phase of your relationship. Yeah, let's send a Valentine's Day card that highlights the breakup. That's what I'm gonna do. Good plan. Before I move on to the next card, I just wanna highlight the artwork, which I will be doing with a few of these cards. I'm not sure I would want to be associated with the couple on this card, given how weirdly proportional they are. And I think they use a lot of the same artists as last year because those cards also had a lot of weirdly proportioned people on the cards. Look how small their heads are in proportion to their bodies and how their legs don't seem to have knees. They just curve like macaroni noodles and they appear to be walking through some sort of sci-fi landscape with flowers that are bigger than people. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, some of these are a bit NSFW. If you catch my drift, this one shows us a man in some very interesting underwear and a very interesting position. The card reads, my butt dialed you on purpose. Hey, jokes. And then it says, happy Valentine's gay. Okay, is this supposed to be a joke about butt sex? I honestly am not sure because anyone can butt dial someone on purpose, but the fact that they specifically said happy Valentine's gay makes me think that there's supposed to be some link between the content and gayness. Although in the intro text to this collection of cards, the OkCupid okay copywriter informed us that these were for everyone and everyone is not gay. And I don't just mean because they're straight. Some people are not gay, they're bi, queer, pansexual, asexual, etc. So how are you gonna put Happy Valentine's gay on here? Huh? You're excluding people. How dare you? I need a drink. So just looking at the artwork real quick, it looks like he's taking a photo of his butt, not like his butt is dialing anyone. The phone is quite far away from his butt. And although I do admire his athleticism, his bendiness, if you will, I just don't think this is a super accurate illustration of butt dialing, not of actual butt dialing, like when your phone is in your pocket, nor if a butt was sentient and could dial a phone. It is neither of those things. Okay, moving on. Ah, the inevitable climate change Valentine's Day card. Very relevant in current year. I think we can all agree. So the card reads, our relationship is like climate change, uncomfortably hot, and my dad is in denial about it. Amazing. Amazing. This is exactly the kind of card that I can see one smug leftist sending to another smug leftist. There was one kind of like this last year. It's not very romantic, even in a non-traditional use of that word. I mean, unless virtue signaling gets you hot, which I think it does get some people hot. So if virtue signaling gets you hot and you are a smug leftist, this is the card for you. And I want to note that the artwork for this one appears in the bottom left corner to have a cane of some sort. So I I think they're going for some disability rep in a kind of subtle way. I mean, this whole image is a total mess. It's very hard to grab onto anything. The two people illustrated here seem to blend into the background. So next one, get excited. You're number one in my heart and OkCupid okay Dave number three in my phone. I mean, honestly, very accurate to real life. 
However, I feel like this is the kind of card that you would just show to one of your friends, like, haha, isn't this so relevant to life? But if you actually sent it to someone you were kind of starting to date, I think you're gonna put them off in one way or another. I mean, someone who's number one in your heart is not gonna be OkCupid day of number three in your phone. Maybe they started out that way when you were first dating them, but I think if it's the point where they're number one in your heart, they will no longer be OkCupid a day of number three and just Dave, or perhaps Dave, insert last name here. But what do I know? I'm not out there with the kids swimming through this crazy dating sea that we're in. I mean, I still peruse all the different dating apps on occasion, and it is quite a cesspool, and I'm very glad that I'm not looking for a life partner anymore. Let me tell you, it's slim pickings out there if you're looking on the internet, which is where I found my husband. So good luck to y'all. You're gonna need a lot of this. The other possibility with this card is it's someone very new and it's just a joke, but honestly, if I was the person receiving this card, I'd be like, I'm out. Like that scene in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World where Scott jumps out the window. All right, brace yourselves. We have another one that's a bit NSFW and not just NSFW, but as you can see, because it is 2022 and we can do whatever we want, beauty standards be damned, this female presenting breast having person is rocking that body hair on their legs and leading up to their navel and for some reason they have vines all around them this beautiful card reads let's go full vax tonight oh no i wonder what this could mean and by that i mean do it three times and be really sore afterwards but um it must have been like a real episode of Mad Men in the OkCupid okay office when they were working on these. Like, all right guys, we gotta do one related to vaccines. I mean, this is in the zeitgeist, right? We gotta talk about vaccines. We had our climate change one, check. Now we gotta do vaccines. I really wish I had access to the balled up pieces of paper that contain the earlier versions of this joke that were discarded. I bet they're even more entertaining than this final version. Look, I used to be a third wave feminist and a super lefty social justice type and I don't even think I was ever cringe enough to send something like this to someone and you know this is putting a lot of pressure on the recipient of this card I mean what if they are not able to do it three times especially if your partner is a penis haver you know sometimes those things just don't function the way that you want them to especially after you've been drinking some whiskey you know what I'm saying this doesn't seem very woke you know let's not put pressure on our sexual partners okay cupid copywriters I'll try anything with you, lover. We're gonna come back to this artwork. As long as it's gluten-free. Happy Valentine's, my little chickpea. What? I guess the gluten-free crowd needs their very specific Valentine's Day card as well. And now they have it. So let's talk about this illustration. This is definitely one of the most disturbing ones so far in terms of the proportions of this human being illustrated here. They're like a giant triangle. Their right arm is enormous. It's almost the size of the entire plate of food. So this is for those of you out there who are sticklers about grammar. You're my one and only boyfriend who knows this sentence has a typo. Once again, are these cards not supposed to be inclusive? Are these cards not supposed to be for everyone? Why are you using gendered terms like boyfriend? Hmm? You're driving me to whiskey. I don't really know what to make of this one. I can't really see this one being used. The climate change one and the Vax one are super cringe, but I know there are people out there who would actually send those to people because they are that cringe and they would pat themselves on the shoulder like, yeah, that was funny and great. This one, I mean, the person sending it would be implying that they have multiple partners and the recipient is one of many. So is it supposed to be for ethically non-monogamous people who are dating multiple people and only one of them pays attention to grammar? That seems like one of those really niche Netflix categories, like sad summer road trip movies to watch after your breakup. Okay, warning, this one is super cringe. Valentine, how did I get so lucky? Oh right, my mom bought me OkCupid Premium for my birthday. 
a like who would send this i feel like some of these are the kind of things that people would look at as in they would look at this web page read the card and go ha 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 how relevant to my life but who would you actually send this to as a valentine's day card you're sending it to the person that you got with through okcupid and you're highlighting the fact that your parents still pay for stuff or that your parents are so involved in your life and particularly your dating life that they bought you okcupid Okay, Cupid premium. I mean, I can see that maybe it's not supposed to be taken literally, but even as a joke, it's not exactly flattering to the person sending it. I just can't see a real market for this one as an actual card, but if you're out there, person who would actually use this card, please leave me a comment. All right, we definitely could not get through this list without a mention of the patriarchy, and here it is. To my patriarchy-defying, non-conforming, label-resisting love, happy February 14th. We're not gonna call it Valentine's Day. That's part of the patriarchy. The patriarchy invented Valentine's Day. It's just February the 14th, and for some reason, I'm sending you a card anyway on this random day. If you're really resisting the patriarchy, to the point that you're not going to call it Valentine's Day. Why are you sending a card? Please explain it to me. Write me a five paragraph essay. Cite your sources. Mind your margins. This image is definitely an interesting one. The proportions are slightly more in balance, which I appreciate. Once again, we have an unshaved leg, but I think that this person is supposed to be in a male body and they are showing their non-conformity through the painted nails. And you will note that there is the four of wands at the top of this image indicating that this is supposed to be a tarot card because tarot is very hip and in right now. So they had to throw that in, obviously. I definitely remember this illustrator from last year. This image is actually slightly less disturbing than the one they contributed previously. And this is the same illustrator that did the first card on this list. The card reads, Our love has grown so much. Unlike our plant, which rotted and died from overwatering. Happy V-Day, plant daddy. Wow, okay. So I can definitely see this one being used by someone. I can definitely see one half of a couple sending this to the other half of a couple to joke about the fact that they are good at being with each other, but not good at a adulting, quote unquote. It's certainly non-traditional, but not sure it's exactly the sentiment for a Valentine's Day card. I mean, look, I have never been a traditional Valentine's Day person. I have spent Valentine's Day single. I have spent it in a relationship. I don't like to get flowers and chocolates, do any of the usual crap. In general, I am not a traditional romantic, and any time that I've been with a person who has been, it has not gone well. And even I would not want to receive this kind of card on Valentine's Day, let me tell you. But maybe this is the card for someone. Maybe they exist out there. And if so, I am so happy for them. I'm so happy that they are being included on this Valentine's Day, if they somehow happen to find this collection of Valentine's Day cards, that is. Another card for the kind of leftists I see on OkCupid who put the pro-choice badge on their profile. You had me at pro-choice and almost lost me at wanna come to my improv show. This is such a niche card and seems more like the kind of thing that I would share with one of my friends and be like, look how cringe this is because this describes real people, often people in the urban elite areas like New York, San Francisco, etc. I could definitely see this being true of a lot of couples in this city because there are a lot of people that do improv and a lot of people that are very proud to be pro-choice and to only date people that are pro-choice. It's a defining characteristic of their personality. But would they be self-aware enough to actually send that card? My mind is like lost in a maze of the irony. This card says, I love it when we role play, but I think we all know by now there's gonna be a twist. Tonight, I'll be someone who wants to hear you talk about crypto. So topical, am I right? It's kind of funny because I'm pretty sure that both of these people are supposed to be female presenting and feminists are always railing about how men dominate crypto and this is bad for women. So it'd be more likely that the femme partner would be saying to their male partner that 
they would pretend to be the kind of person who wants to listen to them talk about crypto. But I guess they're breaking down the stereotypes. These cards are for everyone, exclusively inclusive, etc, etc. This might be the most disturbing image so far, so I'm sorry for showing you guys this, but uh, yeah, I'm seeing this for the first time with you guys, and I'm just, I'm gonna need a drink. Hold on. Yeah, okay, that's better. Just like last year, they have decided to include a Valentine's Day card for those of you who are on your own. Now, the logistics of sending yourself a Valentine's Day card, even a digital one, seem a little iffy at best. Ah, yes, that Valentine's Day card that I saw on the interwebs and I sent to myself. I now see it again. It is just as great as when I first saw it and decided to send it to myself. I feel so loved by myself. Thank you, self. This card reads, I love being my own Valentine, and this boob haver is pouring a milk carton with the word me on top of themselves. And once again, they are unshaven. They are naked except for their underwear. It kind of looks like they're filling themselves up with themselves, like they're pouring themselves onto themselves. I don't know. I'm not going to try to figure this out or my brain might actually shut down. No sharing chocolates or faking orgasms. Happy Valentine's Day, me. You know, there definitely are the kinds of people who would send this card to themselves and be like, happy Valentine's Day, me. And the fact that those people exist is a little terrifying, but at the same time, the likelihood that they will be procreating and passing their genes on is very low. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Another somewhat NSFW suggestive card with a couple in a straddled position. You can call me Valentine and either she or they. Happy non-conforming Valentine's Day. I mean, if you're using she, aren't you still conforming in some sense? Shouldn't you reject the traditional pronouns altogether? I guess the fact that you're open to being called they, either or, makes you non-conforming. The whole non-conforming thing is beyond me, so if there's a non-conforming person out there who this card speaks to, go with God. You do you. This one's pretty straightforward, and I'm sure someone out there could use it if they see it. I really don't know what the open rate is on the emails that OkCupid okay sent out with the link to these cards. I opened it almost immediately and got very excited, but I kind of imagine that that's not the general reaction, and I was not having that reaction for the reasons that the OkCupid okay team would want me to have it, but you know, what can I say? I'm not like the other girl. Valentine, I love sleeping with you. Aww, you might think. Not so fast, viewers. Haven't you learned by now? There's gonna be some humorous, non-traditional twist, just wait for it, and that you never ask me to sleep over. Okay, I guess this is definitely a card for a situationship. Could be for fuck buddies, friends with benefits, people who don't like sleeping in other people's beds. I don't know. I don't feel like friends with benefits and fuck buddies really want to send each other cards on Valentine's Day, because I feel like just even acknowledging that day to each other kind of puts you into dangerous territory for the boundaries of that arrangement. But what do I know? Who knows what these Gen Z kids are doing? Sleeping over is so 2016. In 2022, it's like, like, that was fun, now get out. I mean, this is great for all the guys who are like, oh, she's gonna wanna stay over, I'm gonna have to like make her breakfast and stuff. No, not anymore. She doesn't want that because she's a modern woman, a 2022 woman. She likes that you don't ask her to sleep over. She expects it. This card is definitely for the people living in the urban areas and definitely relevant during the pandemic times. I can't stand to be apart from you. Thank God, because this apartment is so damn small. Look, I can relate to this card. I live in a relatively small apartment with my husband, and we have spent the past two years cooped up with each other. But would I send him this card telling him that? No, definitely not. Last year, they actually had one Valentine's Day card that I could actually see myself sending to my husband as a joke, and I just really haven't found anything on this year's list, you know? This year's list is, um interesting. Okay, there are only two more. We are in the home stretch, so hang in there. I'm gonna take another sip. 
These last two definitely touch on zeitgeisty issues. This one says, your love fills my cup, which is good because I'm not drinking right now. And if you've been paying attention, sobriety has been a trendy topic in the news and the wellness spheres for the past couple of years. So I guess I could see some sober, trendy person sending this to someone that they're dating, I guess. But I tend to feel like the kind of people that fit the niche to send these cards, even they probably don't want to highlight these things on Valentine's Day. They probably just want to talk talk about love without these like tongue-in-cheek jokes in quotation marks. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they are not above sending these kinds of cards. Unfortunately, I'm not really friends with the kind of people that might be cringy enough to send these kinds of cards so I could ask them. I have lefty friends, but they're more like lefty slash normie, if you know what I mean. So I didn't comment on the out of proportion people in like the second to last card because I just wanted to move on and not think about these very weirdly proportioned people. But once again, we have some interestingly drawn people here. They're not the most out of proportion. I'm thankful for that, but they're definitely not very appealing to look at. I think we can all agree. So the card says, things are getting serious. I told my therapist about you. And as we all know, therapy is very much in the dialogue these days, the past couple of years. If you're not going to therapy, are you even with it? I mean, come on. And look, I'm not opposed to going to therapy. I've gone to therapy, but I'm not going to joke about it in the Valentine's Day card. On a more meta level, the fact that this card was written kind of shows you like, oh, well, traditionally, people would say that they told their friends about you, they told their parents about you. But in current year, because going to therapy is such a common thing, at least among the demographic that would be sending this Valentine's Day card, the true test is if you told your therapist about them. Although that could be a good thing or a bad thing. We have come to the end of the list. If you made it this far, I thank you for coming on this journey with me. It was not an easy one to take, despite the fact that I went through a very similar list one year ago. The whiskey helped a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. I'm very excited to see if they will continue for a third straight year in 2023. If they do, I will definitely go through that list. That is, if OkCupid okay still exists a year from now. It's been eight years since I got on it, and it was around before then. It might be like that cockroach that you just can't kill. Time will tell. But given that they keep taking away functionality and adding functionality that nobody asks for or wants as far as I can tell, and that you can no longer actually search for interesting profiles, you can only look at the profiles that OkCupid okay curates for you, and the quality of people on the site has fallen off a cliff over the past few years. I would not be surprised if the company is hemorrhaging money at this point. So I want to say a happy Valentine's Day to everyone watching this. I will put a link to the full list in the description. I will put a link to my video from last year in case you missed it. Thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I will have more content for you very soon.